I don't understand. We prepared. We did everything we were supposed to. Hurricanes are unpredictable. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Arthur tackled serious issues. Maybe there's something you could do to raise money or awareness. Something you love. For this list, we'll be looking at times when Arthur was much more than a kid show, addressing important topics in a way that all ages can understand. Which issue do you think Arthur took on the best? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Natural Disasters Well, that should do it. Since Arthur first aired, the world has seen its fair share of natural disasters. Three years after Hurricane Sandy devastated several countries, Hurricane Sadie hit Arthur's home of Elwood City. Although many Elwood residents prepare for the storm, they discover just how unpredictable hurricanes can be. Bailey! My lights don't work! Alas, we've lost power and have had a bit of flooding. Galoshes, Miss Muffy? The story provides several perspectives that kids can identify with. Arthur is worried about the pets left behind, LaDonna struggles with abandonment when her father is called to duty, Brain sees a therapist, voiced by Adina Menzel, about his fears, and Muffy finds that no matter how bleak things get, you should consider those who might have it worse. I'm so sorry! I had no idea! The episode encourages us to practice compassion during difficult times and reminds children affected by disasters that they aren't alone. Number 9. The Environment Everyone likes a good tree. I wonder what life would be like without them. Several Arthur episodes have tackled the environment, but the cherry tree is perhaps the most informative. It's also probably the most unsettling, opening with Arthur imagining the trees around him disappearing. To make room for a bouncy castle in her backyard, Muffy inadvertently gets her favorite cherry tree chopped down. Well, that tree is now on Anton's property. He can do whatever he wants with it. We like that Muffy didn't set out to cut down the tree, showing how our actions can have environmental consequences that we never even considered. I love that tree. Oh, I wish you had said something earlier. Well, look at the bright side. Plenty of room for the bouncy castle now. Cool. I love bouncy castles. Muffy feels even worse upon learning how trees remove carbon dioxide from the air. A world with fewer trees increases the dangers of climate change. Although Muffy can't bring her tree back, she can use the cuttings to plant more trees and make the world a cleaner place. We are all going to plant some cherry trees! Number 8. Banning Books When I start a Scare Your Pants Off Club book, I just can't stop. Believe it or not, Goosebumps was among the most challenged children's books to come out of the 90s. This is reflected in a season one Arthur episode when Muffy's father leads a charge to remove the Scare Your Pants Off books from shelves. In local news, a parents group chased a series of children's books off the shelves of the public library today. As Arthur and his friends protest, it's revealed that Mr. Crosswire never even read the books he's content on banning. I am proud to say I wouldn't read those books if you paid me. He blames the books for giving Muffy nightmares, although her bad dreams are really rooted in her father's Hassenpfeffer ice cream. The episode mirrors how many parents immediately point their fingers at popular media rather than, you know, talk to their kids and take personal responsibility. While Mr. Crossfire learns a lesson, books are still being banned and challenged, demonstrating how relevant this episode remains. Number 7. Misinformation on the Internet You have to visit a lot of different sites if you want to get the real insider stories. There's a website called Embarrassing Secrets About Movie Stars? Oh yeah, they're a great source. The Internet can be a great resource for research. With the rise of social media, though, it can also be a tool for spreading misinformation and baseless conspiracy theories. Arthur was ahead of the curve, touching upon this timely issue back in 2005. I heard a couple of months ago this guy in Waskatuga found a rat in a bottle of grape drink and the company gave him a million dollars. Where does Buster get all this stuff? Buster gets all of his celebrity gossip and hot tips online. Among other far-fetched things, he reads that tigers are in the park. 
Arthur is skeptical since, well, literally anyone can post anything on the internet, regardless of whether it's true. How do you know someone didn't just make it up? What? You mean, just lie? You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? They later learn that Brain started the tiger rumor, curious to see if people would believe it without a shred of evidence. Brain? Mom, I asked you not to blow my cover. Although Arthur is aimed at kids, we think a lot of adults today could benefit from this episode's message. Number six, growing up with divorced parents. Are you having a good Christmas so far, sweetie? Oh yeah, great. It's just... What? It's the restaurant, isn't it? It's the place for brunch, but we don't have to stay here if you don't like it. While divorce was common in the 90s, we didn't see it portrayed in many kid-friendly programs. Arthur helped normalize the subject, depicting Buster living with his single mother. Adding to the realism, Buster goes away to stay with his father for an extended period during the second season. In addition to children, the series explored how divorce affects parents. Buster's overworked mother feels pressured to give her son a perfect Christmas to compensate for his dad's absence. I think she just gets really nervous that I won't have a good Christmas because my dad's not with us. That's too bad. To give his mom and himself a much needed break, Buster suggests they instead celebrate Baxter Day, dedicating the 25th to relaxation. Maybe Christmas could be a day where we just relax. In another episode, Arthur and D.W. worry their parents might split up. You're right, one of them is gonna move away. The kids fear the worst, but the ending shows how important communication is among families. Number five, autism spectrum disorder. Hey Carl, what do you think? That's a male lion. You could tell because he has a mane. Lions used to live all over the world, but now they're only found in Africa and India. Huh, I never knew that. There's a common misconception that all autistic people are unintelligent, need constant care, and don't want friends. Arthur helped to shatter some of these myths through the introduction of Carl. Sometimes he reacts this way to unfamiliar situations. Carl likes certain things a particular way, doesn't always respond well to change, and forgets to say thank you. At the same time, Carl is quite intelligent, especially when it comes to trains. Cool spaceship! It's not a spaceship, it's the Golden Bullet X-97, the fastest train in the world. It can go 581 kilometers per hour. George finds that people like Carl see things differently than others. This can make social situations difficult for Carl. As Brain teaches George, though, that doesn't mean autistic people can't thrive. By learning more about Carl's condition, George is able to make a connection, and both boys grow from the friendship that blossoms. Now maybe he'll teach me how to draw a better lion! Number 4. LGBTQ plus marriage I'm a big believer in chocolate, but I'm not sure it can make people fall in love. You can see how much the children's television landscape changed between Arthur's earlier and later seasons. In the season 22 premiere, it's revealed that Mr. Ratburn is gay. Initially, Ratburn's students assume that he's marrying a pickly woman named Patty, voiced by Jane Lynch. Nigel, do you really want an A-minus wedding? As it turns out, Patty is only Ratburn's sister slash wedding planner. But if Patty's his sister, then who is Mr. Ratburn marrying? To the children's relief, Ratburn's betrothed is actually a kindly chocolate shop owner named Patrick. The kids never question that Ratburn has a same-sex partner, seeing it as 100% normal. This wasn't the first time the franchise touched upon LGBTQ relationships, as seen in postcards from Buster. Karen, here's Buster and Bo. Hi, Buster. Hi, Karen. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bo. Hi. Good to see you. You too. Nevertheless, seeing an iconic character come out was a major step forward in building a more accepting society. Mr. Ratburn is married! I still can't believe it! Yep, it's a brand new world. Number three, PTSD. What's that smell? What's going on? Hey, yeah, I yeah, smell yeah, smoke! Yeah. All right, children, remain calm. Form a line at the front of the class. This episode aired just over a year after the U.S. faced its darkest day. The episode doesn't directly reference the real-world event that inspired it, revolving around a fire at the school. You don't understand! My dad's still in there! He needs help! Don't worry, Arthur. My crew is looking for him. They're gonna get him out. However, audiences could still connect with the trauma the characters experience, especially if you lived in New York. 
Arthur fears that the next time his father leaves the house, he may not come back. It was no big deal. Really? Weren't you scared? Nah. Takes more than a little fire to scare me. Binky denies that the fire had any effect on him, concealing his panic attacks. Buster feels left out since he slept through the event, eventually finding that he was luckier than some others. While nobody died, Sue Ellen loses her journal. Stay in line, Sue Ellen. Although April 9th sticks with them, in time, everyone finds the strength to start a new page. Number 2. Cancer Mrs. McGrady is sick. She has cancer. We all respond to dire news in different ways. When Mrs. McGrady is diagnosed with cancer, Arthur and DW offer their help, but they go a little overboard. Muffy underplays the situation until she realizes how serious cancer is. I had no idea you were so… sick. Well, cancer's no walk in the park. Having lost her grandfather to cancer, Francine is apprehensive about confronting Mrs. McGrady. She receives encouragement from a cancer survivor, however. In the original season 13 version, Francine meets Lance Armstrong, voiced by himself. I was wondering if you wanted to go for a ride. My bike's downstairs. That is, if it's okay with your parents. Following Armstrong's doping scandal, though, the creators decided to remake the episode with an original character, wrestler Uncle Slam. Would you mind if Francine and I took a walk over there? I'd like to hear more about her friend, Mrs. McGrady. We're glad a version is still in circulation. There are a lot of people this story can continue to help, whether they have cancer or know someone battling the disease. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Insecurity about glasses. Even in the first episode, Arthur had an eye for serious issues. That's a one? No, it's a seven. That's a seven. No, Arthur, it's a nine. Stop bothering me. Distance between best friends. The first of several episodes without Buster. This package came in the mail for you, Arthur. It's from Buster! He always spells read wrong. He can read all right, but he can't write read. This is a plane just like his dad flies. Cool. And they went to this building? Death of a pet. Rest in peace, Spanky. Dad! 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 Why won't Spanky wake up? Oh, um, I think he's dead, honey. Dead? Well, when is he gonna stop being dead? He has to drink his tea. Being embarrassed about a parent's job. There's no shame in being a waste collector. A field trip with Dad? Are you out of your mind? What's wrong with that? Francine, don't you realize what this means? Have you no pride? Way to go, Dad! Come on down! You're missing all the fun! Mistreating others. It's never too late to break the cycle. Hey, it's Muffin Head! Do you keep your toys in that hair? She could keep a whole family in there! <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Race and Peaceful Protests Don't you have any help? Nope. I put in a request with Miss Tingley, but I haven't heard back yet. Two years before passing away, civil rights activist and U.S. House of Representatives member John Lewis lent his voice to Arthur. But what can I do? I already tried talking to the principal. Sometimes people don't hear the first time. You have to be persistent. When Mrs. McGrady is overworked and the school resists hiring extra help, Lewis inspires Arthur to make some good trouble. Others soon join Arthur's sit-in protest, and with Lewis's arrival, McGrady gets the assistance she deserves. Are we having a sit-in? How come no one called me? It turns out McGrady marched with Lewis in Washington. Like McGrady, Lewis also had cancer, which sadly took his life. Not long after Lewis died, a special Arthur short was released in response to the murder of George Floyd. While some argue that children should be shielded from this serious issue, helping kids to understand and build empathy are the first steps in creating a better tomorrow. There's nothing more important than following your conscience. If you can do that, you're always going to sleep well. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.